Hey guys, something that I've heard kind of a lot is people say that in the job that I have or the career that I have, I don't get paid what I'm worth. And so I wanted to make a video to address that question about how you get paid what you're worth. And so here's the answer, you can't. You can't, it's impossible to ever get paid what you're worth. Because think about, what are you worth? Well, you are a child of God. Your worth is infinite. Your worth cannot possibly be measured in dollars and cents. So how can any company possibly come up with enough money that is going to be what you're worth? Obviously that's impossible. Now you might think that I'm just being nitpicky here, but the, the point is that asking how can I get paid what I'm worth is not a very good question to ask because the answer is you can't, right? And so what we really need is to ask a better question. And so you might think, okay, okay, well not how can I get paid what I'm worth, but maybe how can I get paid what my work is worth, right? That seems like a better question, right? Well, again, the true answer to that question is you can't. Right? You can't get paid what your work is worth. And let me, let me illustrate that for you. So let's say that I could do some work for you that would, let, let's put you in the shoes of an employer. Let's say that you're the owner of a company and I apply to work for you and I say that you know, the work that I do for you is going to make you a million dollars. Right? I'm gonna make you exactly a million dollars. So how much is my work worth? Well, in this case, my work is worth exactly $1 million. So then uh, if I say, okay, in order to make you this $1 million, since my work is worth $1 million, I would like to get paid $1 million. What are you gonna say? Well, obviously you're gonna say no, right? Because if I make you a million dollars, but then you have to pay that million dollars right back to me, then my work is worthless to you, right? Then, then since I'm getting paid what I'm worth, you're never gonna hire me in the first place because it's not doing you any good, right? So the truth is that you're always going to get paid less than what your work is actually worth. So that question of how do I get paid what my work is worth, that doesn't really work either. So here's a better question for you. How can I get paid more than I'm making right now? Or how can I get paid X dollars? How can I get paid $50,000 a year or $100,000 a year, whatever your goal is for your lifestyle, ask yourself, how can I get paid that? Or at least how can I get paid more than I am now? Because those are questions that we can actually find an answer for. Okay, now let's drill down on that a little bit. Let's say that you would like to make more money than you are making now. That's a perfectly reasonable goal and we can absolutely attain that goal. There are two factors and only two factors that determine how much money you get paid. And by the way, this isn't only true if you have a job, this is true if you have a business too. You just have to consider that your boss is your customer or your customers uh, if you have a business, whereas your boss is your employer if you have a job, but it works the same way. And those two factors that determine how much you get paid are number one, how much value you provide and number two, the percentage of that value that you negotiate for yourself. Let's take the example again of um, I can come into a business and I say I can make you exactly a million dollars. Right, so the value that I provide is one million dollars. The percentage of that value that I negotiate is anything up to a million dollars. Right, so if I come in and say, hey, I wanna be paid $100,000 and I will make you a million dollars, right, I'm, I've negotiated 10%, right? $100,000 is 10% of a million, so I'm saying that um, I'm gonna provide a million dollars and I'm gonna negotiate 10%, therefore my um, earnings is going to be $100,000. In fact, I can even write that out. So let's say one million up here times 10%, equals uh, 100,000, right? So if I want to increase the amount of money I, I make, then I have to increase either the value that I provide or the percentage that I negotiate. So let's take a look at that. So let's say instead of providing $1 million in value, I provide $2 million in value. At the same 10%, now I'm making 
$200,000 uh, per year in salary. And by the same token, um, if, I, if I can increase the percentage that I am getting of that value, so let's say that um, I, don't, I don't just want 10%, now I want 20%, right? Again, like this is a good deal for the company because they still get 80% of the value. They're still doing very well. Uh, but if I can negotiate up from 10% to 20%, then all of a sudden my salary goes up from 200,000 up to 400,000. And um, it, obviously I'm just using easy to, to easy math numbers, right? So maybe the amount of value that you provide is, is nowhere near $2 million. Maybe you, the value that you provide is like $100,000 and you negotiate half of that. You negotiate 50% and you're at $50,000. So the point is that by increasing either the value that I provide or increasing the percentage that I negotiate to take for myself out of that value, either way I'm increasing the bottom line, which is my salary. Or if I'm a business owner, I'm increasing the uh, amount of money that I make in income in my business. Okay, so that's the really high level about how you make more money. So let me, let me dive into a little bit more detail, right? Because everything that you do to make more money is going to come out of one of these two things. So let's start with uh, number one, with the value you provide. And I'm gonna give you some ideas of what you can do to increase the amount of value that you provide to your employer or to your customers if you're a business so that you can make more. So there are a few ways to do this. Uh, first one, you can learn a new skill, right? Learn a new skill that makes you more valuable and makes you able to provide more value to your employer or to your customer. So for example, let's say that you learn some data skills. Uh, maybe you're working at just a normal desk job and you learn how to do SQL. This is something that I did, uh, which increased my value massively and got me almost a, a two times increase in salary, almost doubled my salary. Um, I made a video earlier on that if you wanna check that out. But um, anyway, so learning a new skill is a great way to do that. Learning a new skill that makes you more valuable. Another thing you could do is improve uh, an existing skill, right? So let's say that you do sales. Um, sales is a skill and there's not just one level of sales. It's not like a binary, like either you know sales or you don't know sales, right? There's always more to learn. So the better you get at sales, the more value you are providing to the company. Um, and so whatever skills you already have, chances are you can make those skills better and uh, in doing that you provide more value. Uh, a third thing that you could do is combine skills in a new way, right? If you could find two or more skills that you could combine to create more value than just the two skills on their own, uh, then that contributes to this. So a, a great example of that is let's actually, let's just take these two skills we already, two examples we already talked about. Let's say you do sales uh, and you know, you know some data skills, right? Well, you could create a sales uh, performance tracking system using your knowledge of sales and your data skills that would be combining these skills and you would create something that is extremely valuable for the company, right? Because it would be good for you as a salesman, but it would also be good for the rest of the sales team and the future sales team that's to come um, because you know your numbers, right? So you're combining two skills to make something that's more valuable than either of the skills by itself. And by the way, this is one of the reasons why I really like data analysis and why uh, I, I focus so much on data analysis is because data analysis combines with just about everything, right? Whether you have experience in sales, in marketing, in HR, uh, in finance, whatever it is, if you know how to do data analysis as well as that, then you get exponentially more valuable because those skills combine so well. So combine new skills in a new way. And then uh, the last way is um, find a new uh, employer or um, find better customers if you are a business owner, right? So you find a new employer that values your skills more highly. 
So for example, let's say that you have data analysis skills and you have the choice between, or you're currently you're working for a small company that um, the founder of the company has all this data skills himself, but he wants some help, right? He wants somebody to help take some of that work off of his plate, right? So that CEO is going to value your skills somewhat, but let's say there's a chance to work for a company that's also a small startup company, but that company's founder has no idea how to, how to work with data at all. And basically he needs you desperately or else his business is going to fail. Right, so you, you see one guy, like one CEO uh, says, okay, it would be nice to have a data analyst. The other says, I absolutely need a data analyst or else I'm gonna go under, right? Which one is going to value your services more? Clearly the second, because it's a more urgent need. So you can always find somebody who needs what you have, who has a, places a higher level of value on, on what you can provide. And of course, this works for businesses too. So let's say, here's a real easy example. Let's say you're selling uh, tickets to a Metallica concert. Well, are you gonna be able to charge a higher price to uh, the person that you know likes Metallica and they, they bob their head a little bit when Metallica comes on the radio? Or the person who is Metallica's biggest diehard fan that absolutely owns everything they've ever done and goes to every single concert, right? Obviously, the second person is going to value it more and they're gonna be willing to pay more. So that'll give you some ideas for how to raise, number one, the value that you provide. Now, let's talk about how to raise the second factor, which is uh, the percent of value negotiated. Percent of value negotiated. So one way that you can take a higher percent of the value that you provide for yourself is you find a, uh, find a market with little competition, right? That is find a, a job position or a job category that you can work in or find a skill set that is in high demand but not a lot of people have. So let's take two examples here. Let's say uh, you work flipping burgers at McDonald's. Right, that's, that's pretty valuable to McDonald's. It's a valuable uh, contribution because their business is going to fail if they don't have people to flip the burgers. On the other hand, it's so easy to do that just about anybody can do it and so you have a lot of competition. So even though the value is high, it's really hard to negotiate a very high percentage of that value because there's so much competition in the marketplace because anybody can do that. Whereas, let's say that you're a engineer or a really good salesperson or a, a really good marketer or again a data analyst right those are more specialized skill sets that not just anybody can do they're valuable and the um, you can negotiate a much higher percent of the value because you are one of the few people who can do it and so uh, you know if, if you're interviewing for a job and they decide that they're not willing to pay you what you ask for well, finding somebody else who's able and willing to do the same job is gonna be pretty difficult. And so they're much more, more open to uh, negotiating and they're really ultimately gonna pay you a much higher salary. Second thing that you can do is to make yourself different or better in some way, right? So even if there is a lot of competition or even if there's only a little bit of competition, if you can find some way to stand out and say, okay, yeah, there's other people that do this, but I do it better. Or I do it in a way that works uh, specifically well for this type of company, uh, right? Then, then this is going to, again, allow you to charge a higher percent of, uh, of the value that you provide because you, you are setting yourself apart from the competition. So your, your competition becomes, your true competition uh, goes down in number. So there are a few ways that you can do this, right? Um, a one way that I teach is to create a portfolio. If you are a data analyst, let's say that you're a junior data analyst, you're just getting started. If you have a portfolio that looks really impressive, you can actually show the employer, hey, here's what I've done. You can actually see it. 
that definitely sets you a level above all the people that are coming in just saying, hey, these are the skills that I know, right? The fact that you're able to prove it, and especially if you're able to show something unique in that portfolio, which again is, is what I teach my students because, um, you know, if you're just just showing basic stuff that anybody can do in your portfolio, it's not going to set you apart. But if you can do something that's above and beyond, uh, then you're making yourself different uh, and better, which is going to raise your value. So um, portfolio is one way. Another way is you could have a YouTube channel, which is what I'm doing right here, right? You know, I know there are, there are other companies that do the same thing as I do, but do they have the same quality of content, right? Like, do they prove themselves in the way that I do? In generally, in general, the, the answer is no, like not, not even close. So you could do that with the YouTube channel. And this works if you're a job seeker too, right? If you get, um, if you have a, a convincing YouTube channel as a data analyst or as a salesman or as an engineer or whatever kind of job you're trying to get into, that definitely puts you above the competition. Do the same thing with a blog or, um, it just anything or write a book, right? Anything that, that is like content that makes you stand out from all the competition, that is huge in determining the percentage of value that you can negotiate. And then the last way that you can uh, negotiate a higher value is, this is the obvious one, just ask. <laughs> just ask, ask for a raise. Um, if you get a job offer, ask for a higher amount of money. It's amazing how many people don't do this. Uh, right, but it's like it's there's nothing to lose if they um, I, I Remember I got I had a, a data analyst job uh, Years ago that they offered me $80,000 which was um, It's just more than I was making like I my previous job was 70,000 I interviewed for a new job They offered me 80,000 and just for the heck of it. I asked for 85,000 and they said, okay like just that <laughs> Like, no, no arguing, no, like, having to justify myself. I just said, hey, could you do 85? And they said yes, right? So, um, obviously, there's, like, more advanced negotiating techniques and stuff, but if you're not even asking, then, um, th then just do it, right? There's nothing to lose. Now, all of this applies to business as well. So, for example, for my data analyst mentorship business, if you're not familiar with that, I'd walk people through the, all the steps they need in order to get trained and hired as a data analyst without having to go back to school and even if they have no relevant experience at all, right? Just starting completely from scratch. And so, uh, let me show you how this works in my business because it's the same model. So, the value that I provide is I get people data analyst jobs. So, if you are, um, let's, let's, show the numbers real quick just so you see how this works here, right? Um, the, the value that I provide is, let's say, about, um, about $500,000, about half a million dollars, which the way that I got that number is, um, let's say that you're, uh, you're making $45,000 a year right now. You learn to be a data analyst and you get hired at $65,000, right? Sixty-five k minus 45K is 20K per year, right? So my service gets you paid $20,000 per year. Multiply that, let's say that you, you know, you're like halfway through your career, you got 25 years left in your career, equals uh, 500,000, right? Equals half a million dollars added value over the course of your career. And of course, that's like without any promotions or raises or anything. So this is actually a pretty low number. It's probably higher than that. But anyway, so, so I'm providing a value of $500,000. Now, if I was to ask people to pay me $500,000 for the service, um, they would say, get lost. Like nobody's gonna pay me $500,000 for this service because they're not gonna make any benefit from it. I'm just taking all of their benefits uh, and they probably don't have $500,000 lying around in the, in the first place. And so actually I have to charge a very small percentage of this, right? I can't, I can't charge anywhere near $500,000 because people just don't have it. They're not able to pay me. And this is pretty standard in business. You know, if you provide a huge value for people, uh, you're, you're probably not gonna be able to take a very high percentage of that. Right, because just because somebody's gonna have $500,000 more over the course of their career doesn't mean that they have it available to pay right now. So you could probably get, get around that with like uh, kind of extended payment agreements 
Um, but then you're getting into difficult legal territory. So basically, unless you want to you want to deal with all of that, you're you're basically you're going to uh, charge a, a small percent of the value that you're giving, and that's okay. So whether you are a business owner or a job seeker, either way, now you have some actionable steps that you can use to get paid more than you have right now. Remember those two factors. They're only two factors that matter. Number one, how much value provide. Two, how, what percentage you can negotiate of that value that gets paid to you. And by the way, the Career Hackers Data Analyst Mentorship Program will teach you both of those factors, right? It'll teach you how to increase your value by learning new skills, showing you what is most important under those skills, because those skills are pretty broad category. Um, it's going to teach you how to combine those skills in a way that provides the maximum value for employers. And it's going to show you under the percent negotiated, it's going to show you how to set yourself apart from the competition and how to do the, na the salary negotiations so that you get paid the maximum amount that the employer is willing to pay. So if you're interested in that, I will put a link in the description below to a free training on that will give you a really good introduction to what being a data analyst is all about and how to get started on learning to be a data analyst. Or if you already know that you want to be a data analyst, that that's the right career path for you, then you can just skip the training and uh, book a call with our team and we can figure out whether or not the data analyst mentorship program is right for you. If you'd like to have somebody holding your hand and showing you every little step of the process and actually working with you live to get it done, uh, then go ahead and apply for that. And I will put the link to apply in the description as well. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope that I got the point across that uh, you're never going to get paid what you're worth. But if you ask the question, how can I get paid more, then the sky is the limit. So if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button. If you got any comments, leave them in the comment section. Share this video with anybody else who you think might benefit from it. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you soon.